Welcome to Citizens Forum. Uh, this week's show is being filmed on May 21st in the beautiful Memorial Arena downtown. Uh, I'd like to thank our volunteer staff and the Shaw staff as well for making this all happen. Uh, this is the week after the election and this is the Walter and Jack show, so let's start off by talking about the election. I mean, like everybody else, I expected the NDP to win. I didn't vote in the end. Um, I, I didn't want to sanction, with, in my pathetically small little way, this just disgraceful, uh, this disgraceful situation we're in, this undemocratic situation that we're in. But anyways, the election happened and now Christy Clark herself has all the power, all the power of the provincial government and it's substantial. All that power has now gone into one person's hands and this is the problem. I mean, if the NDP would have won, it would have been Adrian Dix. Um, it's not democratic. There are so many problems with the system. First of all, I mean, the Liberals only got 45% of the vote. How come they have a substantial majority government? Um, I mean, that, to me, that's an important thing. And I think it's important that we citizens take a real close look again at whether or not we want to move to a proportional system. We voted on it a number of years ago and actually it passed. 57% uh, of the people of BC said, yeah, let's change to a proportional system called STV. But 57% wasn't good enough, they told us, even though in a referendum, 57% is always good enough. But in BC's case, we couldn't change. So here we are many years later. Uh, it failed the second time. It got uh, So our voting system is a problem. And secondly, the premier has too much power. I mean, it's, it's, we elect essentially a dictator, and that is a problem for all of the rest of us. We, the people, are now completely out of the loop for the next four years. No matter what we want, it doesn't matter. Unless, it seems, people are willing to go to the wall and fight them, and then something like the Enbridge Pipeline, because they knew what was going to happen up there, how much anger there was. So they, they, they put that on hold. But basically everything else, everything else, Christy Clark is our queen. Is that democracy? Well, you know, Jack, 57% um, the population wanted to have single transferable vote. And uh, as you say, that somebody made up the rules that we had to have 60%. But at 45% of the vote, they have absolute control. And, and, it, right. and it's a dictatorship. I thought we were going to have an NDP dictatorship, but we're still stuck with the old liberal dictatorship. And uh, it was quite a remarkable chain of events that led to that victory. But I think mostly it has to do with the way the system operates, and I agree. It just simply isn't fair. On Christie's bus, Christie Clark's bus, as she toured the province, the slogan on the side of the bus was, I think, a debt-free BC. I mean, she pushed <laughs> that idea of debt-free BC. And it's a lie. I mean, when, when the Liberals came to power in 2001, the provincial debt was, I think, 37, 37 billion, and they raised it to 63. They added on another 26 billion in debt. So, I mean, for her to say that they're moving in the right direction is, is simply not true. But on top of that, they have, they have saddled us in secret with another $60 billion or $54 billion in debt, which is money we have contracted out to buy power from the corporate independent power producers. BC Hydro was forced to buy this. How, but the amazing thing isn't that Christy Clark goes around with a lie, a debt-free BC on the side of her bus, but the media, never once did I see any of them raise that issue. And the NDP, where was the NDP? That was, I think you have to say, the most pathetic campaign. Or maybe not the most, I mean, it, it was. Well, you know, Jack, it's just so strange is that have they lost? I mean, there is truth and there are lies. I mean, the NDP are pretty good at spin too. 
and uh, apparently they were doing it for the good of everybody. The thing is, is that why? Why did they just continue on spinning a story that isn't really true either by not criticizing the liberals, by the way, is, is to go along with it. Um, and, you know, really, they didn't run a real campaign. You know, with Walter, real I think issues. that is the most important point. When there is something like the lie yeah. of a debt free BC, and the NDP does not point out to all of us <laughs> who, who trust and believe to some extent in the NDP, when they won't even tell us the truth as the opposition, you have to ask, why not? And the only answer I can come up with is that both parties work for corporate BC and corporate BC has put us deeply into debt to them and neither party has the guts to mention it. Uh, because they both have public relations firms running their campaigns and you know there's just no reality to it. You know as I said in the first show you know the, when they kicked off the campaign I was bored already. That's because it was just has no connection to reality. And the thing is, Jack, they are running this province into the ground. The Liberals are financially running us into the ground. That's a reality. It's not going to change. So the Liberals have won the election. So what's going to happen now? You know, really, they have to deal with it some way or other for, for, for another four years. Well, I think what's going to happen is the next step is the privatization of the province. I think really now is the time for the NDP to really do some serious soul searching and none of this mealy mouth sort of strange old oh, it's oh don't be too harsh on us and we sort of blew the election. No, they're misguided. The NDP have been, they have been misguided for a long time. There's a cabal of, of people running the NDP that, that are top of that party that should just step aside. They, they, they completely have mis let us astray. And you know what? If they don't step aside, I'm a member. We should push them aside. That's right. But it, it's not going to happen. No, it, mean, no, it, it but really it is. It, it, we should be. I mean, I want a Democratic Party. That's number one. And if the NDP won't do that, then to hell with it. Well, they've convinced themselves that they're the white knights and they're going to ride in and save us all. But now they forgot about what to do. They don't. St they're not standing for things that people can sink their teeth into. You know. But they don't. Well, they don't. At least Christy Clark, even though she was a myth, the whole campaign was a myth. People bought in, and people desperately want to buy into something. The NDP and Adrian and and John Horgan and all the okay. rest. So we're not say, offering us anything. Let's say you and I were. You, I, I'm John and you're Adrian, um, and we are the leaders yeah. of the NDP. I mean. What I would do is I'd say, what do people want? Right. What do people want? And yeah. let's, let's, let's inform people, let's find out what people want, and let's do that. I mean, isn't that what our government is supposed to do? That's what I would do. Well, they, they can get real now. They've lost the election, they've blown it, they can change their policies. They could get back on track by really criticizing the smart meter program. That is an incredible ripoff, and it does support this uh, this uh, run of the rivers and all that, the, the hydro is going to desperately need money. So they're going to have to charge the ratepayers that money to make make it up. So we're going to be well, paying for the Well, look at healthcare. Notes. I mean, the the big problem with our healthcare system is that it's run by the pharmaceutical industry. So I mean, the NDP, if they were, if I was, if I was the you know running the NDP right now, I would, I mean, I would just put a focus on health. I mean, let's have a health care system, That's not right. a, a system that makes as much money as possible for the drug companies. And at the same time, they're trying to, I mean, they are, they're privatizing the system as, as we speak. Uh, you know, that wasn't even an election issue. Should we move on to something else? Is, uh, <laughs> is there anything else? I'll just end by saying, you know, I feel the NDP let us down. I feel the media betrayed us. They don't let us down. I mean, they know exactly what, all of them know what they're doing. But um, Yeah, and, and people want, I mean, we're, there's so much reliance on this uh, partisan politics, liberal uh, NDP, and, mm -hmm. and they think that they're two very separate type of ideologies and stuff. I don't see that much difference between them, to tell you the truth. And the reason is, is that they, they, they're not 
like if the NDP said, okay, we're, we're going to represent this set of ideas, start out with that, stay with it. And, uh, but the, you, there's nothing that the, the, the party's really standing up for right now. And nobody can relate to them. They just don't know where they are. Well, I'm a member of the NDP. I got dozens and dozens of messages over the last few months asking for money and telling me how great they were. I don't think I ever got a message saying, hey, Jack and all the rest of you members, what is it that you want? Yeah. And, le and we're going to go there. I mean, somehow, somehow this leadership has got to be removed and a more democratic group brought in. And if any of them are willing to do that and say, yes, this is where we go from now on towards democracy, I'll be right behind them. Well, I think young people should rise up and, and uh, get involved in, the, in, 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 the, in politics, in, in the NDP perhaps, and really bring forward the, the things that have to be talked about. We can't spend any more time you know, get, just, just talking about things that don't really matter. And I think you know, um, the NDP really has to reject the whole corporate structure, and particularly with how they ran their campaign. They bought right into the corporate media structure. And I think they just lost the game, the pool game that was being played. They didn't understand the game that they were in, and they lost. And if they would have won, for us, it wouldn't have been any different. Not or too much not different, much anyway. Different. Okay, you got a few things. What's number one on the... Well, there's lots of, lots of things that are going on. Um, you know, the uh, I, things we should just mention, I think, like the Stephen Harper did not know that his chief of staff, uh, what he was doing. Uh, when he wrote the, the $90,000 check to um, Mike Duffy to pay his, uh, pay his account on his uh, falsification of his uh, reporting for where he lived in, uh, in, uh, in the Senate, when he, uh, in his uh, expense claims. I mean, th th this, this guy falsified things. He, he should be booted out of the Senate. Uh, but he's, he's still in the Senate, he's just not in the caucus. The whole government is so completely and totally, it's been corrupted. Our government has been <coughs> corrupted. And, you know, they say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And, and you can see it. Uh, it's, it's got nothing to do with us anymore. Well, you know, I think this is the sort of issues that really get conservatives rankled. And uh, they really were hoping for a lot more from, from Stephen Harper. And really, and it shows the, what the Senate's really all about. is just an old, it's not an old boys, it's an old boys and girls club. Uh, and these people are just there, just soaking up the money the, from the public purse. And it's remarkable how much money they're wasting. The thing is, is too, is that uh, Mike Duffy was a member of the media, and he used to go after people in scandals like this. You'd think he would have learned some lesson or two, but no, it didn't happen. So now, uh, today, I think, uh, which is Tuesday the 21st, uh, Stephen Harper is off to, I think, South America to talk about free trade. Yeah. Who, what gives him the right to go to South America and talk about free trade? I mean, has he talked to us about it? Do we have any idea what he's planning to do? He is signing free trade deals around the world that are, in my opinion, in the opinion of a lot of people, very harmful to the people of this country. And we know nothing about them. I mean, once again, it comes down to the subject of democracy. Stephen Harper is a dictator who doesn't even work for us. He works for corporate Canada. And he's got to be gotten rid of and replaced by a democratic government because we're in very late innings here. That's right. I mean, the planet itself is being destroyed. Nations in Europe are, are teetering on the brink of who knows what. The Middle East, parts of it are aflame. I mean, and, 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 you know, we've, if we can't change this, even if we can change it, we face disaster. But let's at least start moving in a way that works for people and not for the corporations. Well, you, these, these deals, uh, it's a euphemism that they call it a free trade deal because it's really just a way for corporations to operate more freely around the world 
and, re and reduce restrictions, but it doesn't help uh, the workers. There's no higher wages being paid. And it's really undermining the sovereignty of countries uh, and that would be undermining the demo democratic process in countries. So he's working for, uh, you know, for uh, large corporate interests and uh, he's snubbing his nose at the public and he's getting away with it right now. This weekend, which is, I think it's, I think it's on Saturday the 25th at about 12.30, um, there's a march against Monsanto. Uh, it's going to be taking place at the ledge. It's, it's worldwide. I mean, it is a massive, massive endeavor. It's worldwide. A hundred, maybe, maybe every country in the world, for all I know. It's a massive day to celebrate an attack against these evildoers at Monsanto. Um, so just everybody, uh, Google it. Just Google March Against Monsanto or Google Monsanto and start finding out what they're up to because the power that corporation has, what they're trying to do is patent food, all of our food. They're trying to get patents on everything and then they're going to control it. Uh, what a power to have. And, and they're moving along very nicely. Uh, Monsanto's doing great. The rest of us uh, You'd think a prime killed. minister of a country would be really, really concerned about that and be talking about it in the media regularly and saying that we have to have the rights, these fundamental human rights. And that's what a country is all about. You elected a government to look out after the fundamental basic things that we have to have in, 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 our, in our societies. And when these things are being given away, when, when Stephen Harper's off someplace giving away our rights and Monsanto is trying to patent food, um, you know, we're in a very, very serious crisis here. And, you know, one that we can get out of, but we have to all get together and, and work at it, basically. So here's a question for you, Walter. Uh, why is it that fracking, fracking is legal and marijuana is illegal? <laughs> uh, you know, it just, it, it just symbolizes. Well, you know, fracking, Jack, you know, I've been listening to the media uh, when they say, oh, well, people are saying fracking is dangerous. We've been doing it for decades and it's very safe because we've been doing it for decades. Well, if you look at what they've been doing and look at the water tables that have been destroyed. And contaminated, uh, just contamination. And look at what they're pumping into the ground. Uh, yeah, they've been doing it for a long time. Well, fracking, they haven't been looking for the problems. Fracking is an environmental disaster of the first proportion. And it seems now, with Christy Clark's victory, we're staking the whole province on how wonderful it's going to be. If only we can get all the liquid natural gas from fracking. Won't that be great? And that's going to be our future. And, and you know, people bought into it. The, nobody ever tells us the truth about what's going on. But... That one will drift off into the ether. It just is not based on reality. There's no market for, for And if there is a market, so what? They'll destroy northeastern BC. They'll I know, contaminate but, you know, it. But that's what it. the liberals have based their argument on as this economic model that is supposed yeah. to really rescue us. That just isn't that is not based upon reality. And that's the first part, talking about the fracking. But on the other hand, the opposite thing is we have this wonderful plant marijuana, yeah. which has a million and one uses from the hemp plant used yeah. to be the number one crop in the United States back in the 1930s because it had so many benefits and so many uses. Now it's illegal. I mean, it just shows how totally Well, it's quite strange that, you know, Washington is. State has legalized marijuana. It's not such a great leap to, to just make the common sense move. There is a movement afoot to have a referendum on, on legalizing marijuana. And uh, which is great, and I think they should move ahead with it, uh, but it shouldn't be necessary. You know, 80% of the population in British Columbia want to legalize marijuana. Isn't that good enough to just go ahead and legalize it and give it a shot? I think they should. The fact that they don't shows that we do not have a democratic government. And, and I mean, that's to me the issue. We've got to basically overthrow this dictatorship which pretends to be a democracy and which rules over us and demand democracy. Um, and people are doing it. Uh, the word democracy yeah. is mentioned more and more. Um, I'd just like to mention for a minute uh, 
uptown, downtown, uh, and the Blue Bridge. So here we are. Uh, I think work has now started on uh, on building a new Blue Bridge over, uh, you know, uh, on Johnson Street over over the around the Inner Harbor. Um, only two minutes left. So, folks, I think what's happening is this: the Uptown Mall, which has been built with the Walmart in it, is huge. It is massive. That I think is the plan is to make that the new downtown. If that's going to be the case, then downtown has to be kind of removed as an, as an opponent. So that's why the rail bridge was taken out. Um, the rail bridge, the e and line should be bringing people in by the thousands to downtown Victoria every, every day. I mean, it's the obvious solution to the, with a few express buses along the way, going out to uh, the hospital, going to UVic, you know, going, you know, two or three express buses running off of the line. But it can't happen because that's not the plan. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a disaster. You wanted to say a few words about Mayor Rob Ford of Toronto, I think. Well, I mean, it's, another, it's just another story. It's just, I mean, and there's it only really, one left. it's really quite, quite remarkable that, uh, you know, they, they think they have the mayor of Toronto on a video somewhere uh, smoking crack cocaine and uh, uh, somebody wants to sell it. Uh, uh, to the media for two hundred thousand dollars, and they're the online. They're raising money to do that, and um, you know you have to just wonder. Well, what the heck is going on in the city of Toronto? What what kind of mayor is this guy, and uh, what kind of culture are we into now? When these are the big stories, Jack. You know, uh, some guy smoking crack. The, the rest of the country is going down the tubes. By the way. And, and we have uh, this and, big story from out of Rob Ford. Thank you, Walter. And that has been the Walter and Jack Show, May 21st, Citizens Forum. Thanks.